Manchester, the greatest city in the world. Every last one of you is on the right side of history, so I want yourselves to give a massive round of applause. Big up yourselves every time. So I've written a speech and I'd love to share it with you all. So I'm an activist and a proud anti-racist. I've been involved in a number of campaigns over the last couple of years, especially after the killing of George Floyd. That sparked the worldwide BLM movement. We've achieved so much in such a short space of time. People have become more politically aware, more politically engaged. People were prepared to take to the streets after the killing of an unarmed black man whose life was painfully, slowly and brutally taken in front of all of our eyes. Now I was here on this very spot in June 2020 with over 20,000 protesters. The momentum that was created on the back of the BLM movement felt positive. We had football players taking the knee and sending a clear anti-racist message to the world week in, week out on a global platform. In Wales, it has become mandatory to teach black history on the curriculum. The officer who killed George Floyd was sentenced to murder, and rightly so. Now this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the protest. So I know I'm preaching to the converted, but I can't express enough how important it is the Enough, enough campaign continues and we continue to take to the streets regularly. Now, although Keir Starmer called the BLM movement a moment, it was far from that. It was and is a movement, as is this right now. And that scared the government, so much so they introduced a new police crime and sentencing bill. Now this vile British government attempted to criminalise protest, our basic human right to stand on the street and protest peacefully. It had laws in there stating if you make too much noise or damage a statue, you could be sentenced to up to 10 years in jail. 10 years for peacefully protesting. Now we did this a while ago, so we're gonna do it again. Like I said, if you make too much noise, you could have got 10 years under that law. So for 30 seconds, can we all make as much noise as possible and let them know what we think of that law? As much noise as possible to let them know what we think of them infringing on our basic human rights. Yeah, let them know. Okay, 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 okay. Now last year, also imagine actually, hang, hang on, imagine if we'd have done that last year, we would all be getting 10 years in jail for making too much noise. It's fucking mental. Anyway, let me compose myself back to this feed. So, last year in March, my good friend and long time activist, Karen Reisman, who's here somewhere in the crowd, a mental health nurse of over 30 years, decided to call a protest over the NHS, as the NHS staff were insulted by the shocking 1% pay rise the government offered them. They've kept this country running during the pandemic. They've continued to work around the clock, save lives under government cuts, and have been pushed to the brink. Now what did Greater Manchester Police decide to do? They fined her £10,000, because under the law at the time, it was illegal to protest. £10,000. They handed it to her like it was a parking ticket. Now how can anyone expect to pay 10 grand? Now this sent a very clear message to the people who are thinking of having a protest. It was a declaration of war as far as I was concerned. Now we set up a GoFundMe page for people to support Karen in paying that fine and the community came together in under three hours and over 10,000 pounds was raised. Now that, now that is what real community and togetherness looks like. In the end, around £16,000 was raised in just a few hours and because of public pressure and the appeals, the fine was eventually overturned and the money raised went to a local mental health charity of Karen's Choice. Now the point is, the point is, this is the length this Tory government are prepared to go to to oppress our people. And when I say our people, I really mean our people. These are our issues, they affect us all. It's not just about black or white, these are all our issues. And we're seeing that now with the cost of living crisis. It doesn't choose what colour skin you are, it will affect us all. Now we're talking about the same government who refused to extend free school meal schemes, literally allowing children to starve. And it took Marcus Rashford, a young footballer, to force him with his campaign into making a U-turn. Right? 
We're talking about the same Tory government who outs this country in lockdown, isolated in the homes, and physical and mental health was deteriorating. They were partying with wine and cheese. They're literally laughing in our faces. Now, Boris Johnson was found guilty of breaking the law, but he recently won a majority vote of confidence by the rest of his Tory MPs. We're talking about a government who have introduced this vile Rwanda policy, where they will deport people seeking asylum to Rwanda. The list goes on and it's hard to keep up. Now, this government has blood on their hands and we must never forget. How much more can we take? This winter is going to be unbearable for a lot of people. And with the new energy bills uh, rising, some people simply won't be able to heat their homes. They're choosing between heating or eating. Is this the modern Britain we're happy to live in in 2022? No! Right. 12 years under Tory rule, when will it end? Just because Boris has gone, on his own terms by the way, don't think that's progress, they all just rebrand. I won't forget the Windrush scandal and the hostile environment Theresa May was in charge of. Around the same time, Grenfell fire happened. And there are still hundreds of tower blocks around the UK with flammable cladding all over them. I won't forget David Cameron introducing £9,000 a year tuition fees to go study at university, putting people into crippling lifelong debt. It's all about control. When education isn't accessible to all, we create a two-tier society. The rich will and are getting richer, and we must all just fight amongst ourselves. I'm sick of this vile, divisive, racist government. And I'll say it how it is. Boris Johnson is a racist. Right? And every Tory MP who voted for him in that vote of confidence and supports him is also a racist. So essentially we've got a racist government. Now while there's so many people here, I'd like to take the opportunity to talk about a case that happened in London recently on the streets just last month in September. A 24 year old unarmed black man called Chris Cabber was shot and murdered by the Met Police. He was shot in the head. He was unarmed. This is murder. The Met Police, along with GMP, are institutionally racist forces. But when you have a government like ours, how can we ever expect long-lasting change? Now, this case hasn't been covered enough in the media, and it's our job, the public, to hold them to account. Now, I've got a statement from Chris Cabber's cousin, who is leading the campaign, and he's asked me to read it out to you all, so please just bear with me. Dear brothers and sisters, the Cabba family would like to send a heartfelt thank you to all those who have come out to stand in solidarity with the family and to support us in our search for justice. We appreciate you and what you're doing for us more than you can ever begin, more than we can ever begin to articulate. The last two weeks have seen our lives and the lives of countless others rattled and moved by this tragedy. Chris was a soon-to-be father, a brother, a son and a friend, a soul with so much potential and it's heartbreaking that I won't be able to live up to that now. And though we mourn, we must just remember that this is bigger than us, bigger than Chris, bigger than the shooter, that this is about principle of justice. It's about what that word truly means to this nation, about the people are willing to do to make sure that that word is not just part of a hashtag, but is a principle that is incorruptible, one that holds weight before the eyes of the people. Brothers and sisters, this, this is about our values, what makes us who we are, about the most fundamental element of the right and wrong, because the second we start to conflate the two, we are lost. Chris mattered to us, he was loved by us, he was cherished by us, and he was and always will be one of us. We fight for him, but not only for him, but for all that came before him, and also all that will come after him. The Cabba family send our love and unwavering gratitude to all, and we call justice for Chris Cabba. Now we must hold the government and the police to account. The Enough is Enough campaign is a brilliant movement with great momentum behind it and I fully support collective action around the UK. I just want to end by saying justice and solidarity to the family of Shukri Abdi, justice and solidarity to the family of Yusuf Maki, justice for Chris Kaba, and solidarity to any family who have lost someone at the hands of the police. Enough is enough. Let's pull together, let's get organised, let's demand a better world for us all to live in. No justice, no peace. Let's keep fighting. Yeah.